Welcome back to another Pro Tools tutorial. This time, we're going to be taking a look at EQ and compression for dialog. Using Pro Tools, I'll demonstrate practically how I go about this process. It will be a bit of a longer video than usual, just because I want to accurately reflect the processes and methods involved. So, let's get started. Recently, I've had a few video requests from viewers, including more than one asking for a video on how to compress an EQ dialog. So that's exactly what we're going to be taking a look at in this video. I'm going to focus mostly on documentary style content, but many of the concepts covered will also apply to dialog for film. One thing to note before we start is that there is no standard approach to this, so I'll be showing you some of my methods and workflows. But as with many things in audio production, there's more than one way to achieve a good result. So take whatever you find useful from this video and adapt it to fit into your own workflow. So with that in mind, let's get started. One thing I want to talk about briefly before we get into the EQ and compression side of things is the subject of loudness. At the risk of venturing into another topic entirely, here are some current loudness standards for various platforms. These are measured in LUFS, LUFS, which stands for Loudness Units Full Scale. And what you see here are the integrated or average loudness levels which content on those platforms must adhere to, measured across the whole program duration. Of course, Tidal and Spotify are music-only platforms, but the others certainly apply to audio post. It's worth noting that the US ATSC-24 standard is usually indicated as LKFS, that's loudness K-weighted full scale, but this is actually identical to LUFS. Okay, here's a session which contains dialogue from a few different productions. The first I've actually imported the video for, let me just open that. This was from a parkour documentary which I mixed a couple of years ago called Roof Culture Asia from a parkour group called Stara. If you want to see something insane, take a look at it, it's on Amazon Prime. Anyway, the audio for this production was a real challenge because it was all recorded on rooftops with lightweight portable gear, no professional sound recordist, and a lot of the sound actually came from GoPros, which was challenging to work with to say the least. I was actually surprised how much low frequency content GoPros pick up, so there was a lot of filtering involved uh, at the mixing stage. Fortunately though, the interviews themselves were reasonably well recorded with half decent kit, but they are a little bit thin sounding with a harshness in the midband, and there's a hint of clipping in there as well. Let's just take a listen to some of the audio from this documentary. I'm just going to zoom in a bit. There we go. I posted it on my Instagram because I thought it was a cool clip. We wake up the next morning, it's had 70,000 views on Instagram and already started getting some traction on blogs and things like this. I think it took two days to get up to its full height of virality. Crazy, crazy amounts of views on it. Within another day or so, it was on Unilad, on the Daily Mail, like it was getting picked up everywhere. Now there's that slight clipping on the louder parts and also, like I mentioned, there's a bit of a harshness in the midband. I might just address this clipping if possible. I'm just going to play this short bit once again because it happens a couple of times here. Up to its full height of... Yeah, I don't know if you can hear that. Up to its full height of... There's like a slight crunchiness going on, just a little bit of distortion. So before I actually get to the EQ and compression stage, I'm just going to see if I can solve this problem of the clipping. In fact, before I do this, because I'm going to be processing this with Audio Suite plugins, I like to have a way to get back to the unprocessed version, and one way to do that is with playlists. This track actually, actually already has a couple of playlists on it. I've got this one, and uh, I was messing around earlier with an alternate one. But I'm just going to duplicate this one before I apply the processing. The keyboard shortcut to create a duplicate playlist on the Mac is Control Command Backslash. And I'll just call this Roof Culture, which is the name of the program. Uh, I'll call it Processed. Okay, and you can see over here, we're now working on that playlist. If I wanted to switch between them, I could click on this little blue triangle and then choose any of the others. Or on the keyboard, hold down the shift key and press the up and down arrow keys and it will cycle through those playlists. Right, let's go into the audio suite menu, into noise reduction. Now we could also reduce the background noise, but I did a separate video on noise reduction, so I'm going to try not to go too heavily into that. I'm just going to choose the RX7D clip and I'll just test it out on this short bit one more time, just before I process it. Here it is, without any processing. Up to its full height of... And let's just see what I can do with this. It's just in the very top part that the distortion becomes apparent. Let's just preview this. Up to its full height of... Up to its full height of... Up... Okay. Just going to do a, a quick test where I render that. 
up to its full height of just undo it up to its full height of now you may be listening on an iphone or an ipad or some kind of portable device and thinking oh, i can't hear any difference but there is a difference and if you're listening on headphones or studio monitors you'll hear that it's there let me just now that i know that that's going to work i might bring the makeup gain down a little bit there is a post limiter on here but i don't want it to be uh, limiting it too much so just bring it down slightly select the whole thing in this case I can probably render it as a continuous clip, but just in case I need to mess with any crossfades later on, I think I will do it as individual files. It gives me the option to, you know, smooth over edit points should I need to render that onto the timeline. And I'll just run it through one more time before we do any actual EQ or compression. I posted it on my Instagram because I thought it was a cool clip. We wake up the next morning, it's had 70,000 views on Instagram and already started getting some traction on blogs and things like this. I think it took two days to get up to its full height of virality. Crazy, crazy amounts of views on it. Within another day or so, it was on Unilad, on the Daily Mail, like it was getting picked up everywhere. Okay. That's an improvement, but we still need to EQ it. Now, quite often when you're working with dialogue, you'll want to filter out the low frequencies, but there are no real low frequencies in this recording because it's already quite thin. So I suspect there is no point in putting a high pass filter on it. We could have a look at a spectrum analyzer just to see what's going on. And I think we'll probably see not much going on below, I don't know, maybe 100 hertz or so let's have a look i posted it on my instagram because i thought it was a cool clip we wake up the next morning it's had seventy thousand views on instagram and already started getting yeah. some traction so there's quite a lot happening like around i think it took two days to get up to its full height 500 variety. to 1 kilohertz Crazy. 500 hertz to 1 kilohertz but there's not much at all going on below 125 hertz and i'm not going to bother putting a filter on that for that reason but i am going to of course uh, apply the eq and just see if i can reduce that harshness a little bit somewhere around 1k perhaps and then maybe add something in at the bottom end let's give it a go i posted it on my instagram because i thought in fact before i do this one thing i'll say is quite often what i'll do when i'm e equalizing dialogue is to do quite a heavy boost it might even go into distortion quite a heavy boost around the frequency which i think is the problem frequency sweep around the frequencies to the point where it sounds the worst as in where i'm exaggerating the harshness the most I know that's the problem frequency then, and then I can apply a cut to that particular band. So here we go. I posted it on my Instagram because I thought it was a cool clip. We wake up the next morning, it's had 70,000 views on Instagram and already started getting some traction on blogs and things like this. I think it took two days to get up to its full height of virality. Crazy, crazy amounts of views on it. Within another day or so, it was on Unilad, on the Daily Mail. Like, I think it's probably around there. So. I might just narrow the bandwidth a little bit and apply a cut instead of a boost. I posted it on my Instagram because I thought it was a cool clip. We wake up the next morning, it's had 70,000 views on Instagram and already started getting some traction on blogs and things like this. I think it took two days to get up to its Try and add in that low frequency virality. content. Crazy, crazy amounts of views on it. Within another day or so, it was on Unilad, on the Daily Mail. I'm just going to do an A-B comparison between the, the two so far. So if I bypass it. Within another day or so, it was on Unilad. On and the unbypass. Within another day or so, it was on Unilad. On the day. Okay, so that is probably an improvement. But one thing that has started to happen a little bit is um, because I've boosted, maybe I've boosted too much, around 130 hertz, it's starting to pull up some of perhaps the unwanted low frequency content. So actually now we are going to apply a high pass filter below that just to filter out any of the stuff that we know isn't going to be useful. And this was actually shown in a couple of cinemas before it was subsequently, you know, available as an online streaming video. And where you're playing it over a large sound system, you definitely don't want excessive low frequency content in the mix because it's going to sound really bad. Let's play that one more time. Within another day or so, it was on Unilad, on the Daily Mail, like it was getting picked up everywhere. One thing which is sometimes worth doing with a production like this is to compare it to some dialogue from another production. And so before I proceed with this in terms of compression and level and so on, I'm just going to compare it to this, which is from a completely different video. I'm interested in innovation. I think it's really exciting. And also we are... Now straight away, it's obvious it's too quiet. So I'm just going to turn it up without looking at the level initially. I'm just going to get, get it broadly into the same area as this by 
looking at the waveforms. We will shortly take a look at the loudness meter, but this is just a quick thing. Daily Mail, like it was getting picked up everywhere. I'm interested in innovation. I think it's really exciting. So this one has quite a lot more low frequency content. That might be actually excessively, you know, prominent in the low end. Let me just check this on, on the spectrum analyzer. It's worth noting that these are not massively useful. You know, I don't really refer to these very often, but it does give you a, a rough idea of what might be going on in certain frequency bands and where most of the energy lies. Let's have a look. I'm interested in innovation. I think it's really exciting. And also we are at a time in humanity, really, that at a point of a bigger... The... See, with that one, there's an overall trend downwards, perhaps that would need to have a slight low cut and a high end boost. Whereas with this one, prior to correction, it was- Within another day or so, it was on Unilad, on the day- A bit mid heavy. So here Within with the, another- Here with the um, EQ. Within another day or so, it was on Unilad, on the Daily Mail, like- Okay, I'll say that's good enough for now. The next thing to address, of course, is the level. And I'm gonna use Waves Loudness Meter with this. And I'm just gonna load a preset, which is the EBUR128 LUFS18 setting. This is the setting I usually use for UK broadcast. And let's assume we're mixing all of this content in this session, just for consistency, to the minus 23 LUFS target level. Like I said, I don't wanna go heavily into loudness in this particular video. A lot of other people have done really good videos on this topic already. Um, but I will mention the fact that the long term here is the integrated level as measured across the entire duration of everything that you play through it. But also we've got the short term and the way that I approach dialogue, certainly for a documentary at least, is I will listen to it in isolation to begin with and I'll get it close to the overall target level. So I'm just going to reset this plugin actually, play the dialogue and then I'm going to clip gain it downwards I suspect in the case of this. So I'm getting close to minus 23 LUFS, maybe slightly below. Let's have a look. One thing I'll just point out before I do this is that I've got the clip gain line switched on here. If that isn't on, you can hold down control and shift and press the minus key at the top of the keyboard. That will toggle the clip gain line on and off. And if you want to toggle the clip gain info, which is this little fader here that allows you to do that individually, then you can hold down control shift with plus. So control and shift always forms the basic modifier set for any clip game related keyboard shortcuts. But for now, let's play this and see if we can turn it all down to be close to the tar target level. The short term averages over about three seconds. So if you don't play at least three seconds of content through it, you won't get a true representation of what the overall level's doing. I posted it on my Instagram because I thought it was a cool clip. We wake up the next morning, it's had 70,000 views on Instagram and already started getting some traction on blogs and things like this. I think it took two days to get up to its full height of virality. Crazy. And you know what, that's actually already quite close to the target level without having to apply any clip gain. I think when I applied that processing earlier to reduce the clip in, it did pull the overall level down. And so now just by coincidence, it's in about the right place. Now let's take a look at the compression for this. I'm gonna keep this plugin open and uh, instantiate a compressor here. And if I wanna do that without this closing, I could just turn off the target button on this loudness meter. Now I go to this insert, put a compressor on, with compressors, you can very easily end up with quite a lot of them on your system. And you know, nobody's gonna use all of these. I don't, I only use a small selection of them. One of the ones which I like the most though is the Avid Pro Compressor. So open this. And I don't really want this to be a video about an introduction to compression. This video is more intended for people who already have a basic understanding of what compression does and what the controls are. But I will just briefly go over what each of them does before we start applying any kind of settings to it. So the threshold, that's the point above which the compression is actually going to act. You can see as I change this, this graph changes to reflect that. Basically, if I had it on minus 14 dB or thereabouts, it would be linear, as in it wouldn't compress any sound which fell below that level. That's minus 14.1 dB FS. Anything above that would start compressing according to the ratio and the ratio is expressed as something to one. So three to one means that if it goes three dB over the threshold, it's gonna pull it back down to one dB. If I set it to 6.2 dB to one, then it's gonna be for every 6.2 decibels in level, the audio goes over the threshold, it's gonna reduce that to just one dB of change. And once you get to kind of over 10 to one and you go towards, you know, certainly 20 to one, it's gonna become effectively something very close to limiting, where anything above the threshold is gonna be really heavily compressed. We probably don't want that for dialogue. I'm gonna set this to, let's 
take it back to the default. If you want to default any control in Pro Tools, hold down the Alt key, the Option key, click it with the mouse, it'll go back to whatever the preset default is. And I actually tend to compress dialogue, most dialogue, uh, something like 2.6 to 1, maybe be, let's say between 2.5 and 3 to 1. That's not an absolute hard and fast rule though, because some dialogue is very consistent to begin with. So you might only need, you know, 2 to 1 or even less. Some dialogue is really varied. And I've actually mocked up a recording that we're going to look at later on. You can see it over here where this varies hugely in level. That's a case where you're going to have to be looking at a higher ratio. Next control, which not all compressors have, is the knee. And you can see as I adjust this knee, if you take a look at this graph once again, it goes from what you might call a hard knee there, because it looks like, you know, a bent knee. And as you increase it, it goes more into what you call soft knee compression. With a zero setting on the knee, what that would mean in this case would be there'd be absolutely no compression until anything hit minus 14.1 dB. When it went over that, it would suddenly be compressing at 2.6 to 1. Maybe you don't want that. Maybe you want it to be gradually easing into the full ratio. So if I set, say, something like, I don't know, 5 dB or so of knee here, what that would mean is over a 5 decibel range, it would gradually go from 1 to 1 ratio, as in no compression, up to 2.6, so it would go 1 to 1, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, blah, 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 until it reached the final uh, ratio at the end. And that can sound more natural in a lot of cases. For dialogue, and the, the, remember these are just guide figures, I tend to set it to somewhere around 5 dB of knee. I find that no knee, as in a 0 dB setting, can sometimes draw a little bit too much attention to the compression because it becomes more apparent when it acts. So this is a way of kind of gradually introducing it over a certain range so it's less obvious. Now, when we're dealing with low ratios, like 2.6 to 1, it might not be that apparent when it starts compressing anyway, but the knee setting just smooths it over that little bit more. The attack and release are, of course, how quickly the compressor acts and how quickly it stops acting. That's once it goes above the threshold. It's subject to the attack. So in this case, if it hits minus 14.1, goes above it, it'll take five seconds before it actually starts to act. And the release control means once it drops below that threshold, it's going to take, in this case, 100 milliseconds to stop acting or to basically deactivate the compression. I'd be interested just to have a quick look at one of the presets on here and see what uh, one of the suggestions is. So I usually compress everything entirely manually, but sometimes it's a, a worthwhile starting point to take a look at a preset Let's take a look at this film DX setting. So on the attack and release, they've actually got what I would consider to be too quick an attack. 200 microseconds, that's really quick. And a release of 150 milliseconds, which is reasonable. So if I was modifying this setting, I would probably increase that attack time. You can see the symbol there for microseconds. If I increase it, eventually it becomes milliseconds. Once we get to 1,000, like that, 1 millisecond and potentially it goes all the way up to one second. For dialogue, I usually do keep it around the five millisecond setting. And on the release, let's try it on the 150 millisecond setting. I'm just gonna restore my ratio back to what it was, 2.6. We don't know what the threshold is gonna be because we don't really know exactly how loud the audio is. So the best thing that we can do now is play it, take a listen, whilst also having a look at the loudness meter. I posted it on my Instagram because I thought it was a cool clip. We wake up the next morning, it's had 70,000 views on Instagram and already started getting some traction on blogs and things like this. I think it took two days to get up to its full height of virality. Crazy, crazy amounts of views on it. I think we probably don't need to go too, too heavy with this particular compression. If you look at the loudness range on here, you know, the loudness range broadly gives you an idea of the dynamic range of the content that you're playing through it. I'm just going to disable this compressor or bypass it, run it again, reset this. And I think you'll see that the range is really quite low on this. So although it looks quite peaky, it doesn't really deviate that much in level, at least perceived loudness of the dialogue. I posted it on my Instagram because I thought it was a cool clip. We wake up the next morning, it's had 70,000 views on Instagram and already started getting some traction on blogs and things like this. I think it took two days to get up to its full height of virality. Okay, so the range there is 3LU. That's not very much at all. That's pretty consistent sounding. But sometimes you're going to compress stuff, not necessarily to deliberately reduce the range, but just to bring it under control. And these peaks, I think, could do with reining in slightly so. What I'm going to do now, I've heard it, is re-enable the compressor and just increase the threshold so it's not acting on quite the same amount of the audio. So it's only going to compress the 
sort of louder parts. Let's see what that does. I posted it on my Instagram because I thought it was a cool clip. We wake up the next morning, it's had 70,000 views on Instagram and already started getting some traction. Right, just pull this threshold down a bit, like actually. I think it took two days to get up to its full height of virality. Crazy, crazy amounts of views on it. Within another day or so, it was on Unilad, on the Daily Mail, like it was getting picked up everywhere. I think I'm fairly pleased with that for now because in this case, all I was trying to do is just provide a little bit of control to the dialogue, certainly on these louder peaks. One thing to know about compression is that it takes quite a long time to be able to fully hear it and to know what you're listening for. I teach a lot of students and when I first show them compression, they basically can't hear it until it's extremely heavy. And over time, as they do more compression and they get an understanding of its characteristics and the results that you get from it and how it sounds, they start to apply lighter compression. It will become more apparent when we look at the more dynamic one later. So for now, all we're doing is deliberately applying very light compression just to provide that extra control. Now let's take a look at the next one. One good thing about that section we just listened to is that it was hitting uh, about minus 23 or close to for the long term. You know, if there was music, I did mention before about the fact that this was from a documentary which did have music throughout the majority of it in addition to the dialogue. The presence of the music does affect how you go about processing the dialogue because an excessively dynamic piece of dialogue can cause it to get lost in amongst the other elements of the mix. And that's why you do need the compression. It just provides the consistency of level so that it can sit where it needs to sit in the mix. Now, let's move on to this one. I don't have the video in the session for this. This is from a different production entirely. And we'll listen to it whilst also keeping an eye on the loudness here. So we're looking at the short term, by the time it's played through, we're going to be interested mostly in the long term. I'm interested in innovation. I think it's really exciting. And also we are at a time in humanity, really, that at a point of a bigger, the, probably the biggest crisis we've ever had as a, as, a, as a race with climate change. And I don't believe the planet, it's a problem with the planet. The planet will survive whatever we do to it. It's whether the human race survives, really, that's, that's critical. Okay. That does vary quite a bit in level, especially this part here, which actually exceeds zero. If you ever want to check what the absolute level of something is in Pro Tools, go over to here in the I.O. section. And if that isn't shown, then you can show it by clicking here and just make sure you choose it. And hold down the command key on the keyboard. And when you click on this, it will cycle through volume, delay, any delay inc incurred by plugins processing on the um, track. And finally, peak. Now you can see that's peaked at 2.3. I'm just going to reset this, play it from here, and you'll see that this little display updates to show what the maximum peak level you've hit so far is. Probably the biggest crisis we've ever had as a it's minus as a, 5 as a race with climate change. Plus 2.3. And 2 .3. I don't believe the planet. And this bit here is probably going to be getting on for zero dB. Let's just play it from it. And I don't believe the planet. It's actually plus 0.3. So we've got some over levels there. I'm going to do something a bit different here. I'm going to apply. Uh, a high pass filter because there is some excess low frequency stuff going on maybe even boost the higher frequencies just to kind of add some clarity into it or top end then i'm going to put a limiter on it to deal with that then i'm going to apply the compressor and i'll explain why as i go so first things first let's apply this eq let's open that i've already started messing with the high pass filter here so it's actually active but it's active at 20 hertz so effectively it's doing nothing play this, and then I'm going to see how much filtering I can get away with. Of course, there comes a point as you increase the frequency where you start to adversely affect the dialogue and make it too thin. So it's a balance between filtering out unwanted low frequencies and not affecting the voice to the point where it sounds thin. So let's play this. I'm interested in innovation. I think it's really exciting. And also we are at a time in humanity, really, that at a point of a bigger... See, that's too much. The biggest crisis we've ever... If we go, go that high, it's going to sound very thin. Maybe that would be okay if you were ever making something that was only going to be shown, say, within an app, like a mobile phone app, and it was going to be listened to mostly through phone speakers. But for documentaries, you want it to go lower than that because people are going to be listening on larger speakers. I'm interested in innovation. I think it's really exciting. And also, we are at a time in humanity, really. That Let's just do an A-B by bypassing it. I'm interested in innovation. I think it's really exciting. And then with the uh, filter. 
I'm interested in innovation. I think it's really exciting. So that has had an effect. If you're ever monitoring something on less than ideal speakers, like if you're working on something at home and you don't have large studio monitors or you have headphones, which maybe don't have the bottom end necessary to monitor something accurately, you might want to just be slightly cautious with the filtering and filter it even if you don't think you're filtering anything out. Sometimes, you know, if someone subsequently listens to it on a large sound system and you didn't monitor it accurately, there might be the extraneous low frequencies which you weren't aware of. So play it safe and uh, put a filter in place. Next thing is we could apply some noise reduction to this actually because this was recorded in a convenience store and there is a fair bit of background noise going on. And also we are at a time in humanity really that at a point of a bigger, probably the biggest crisis we've ever had as a... As a I will mention the fact that if the video was here with this, you'd see that he was there, you can see that he's in the store. You don't want to filter out all the background noise for many reasons, one of which is you can see he's in a store in the shot, so if there's no background noise, it's going to look and sound pretty weird. Secondly, there's only so much noise reduction you can get away with before you start to introduce artifacts which are audible. And so I'm going to reduce it, but just a little bit. So I'm going to apply this one as a plugin in real time. And I'm just going to use the RX7 voice denoise. Now this has an adaptive mode which is on by default and this automatically uh, ascertains what's dialogue and what isn't and reduces it. For something where the background noise changes in its characteristics, such as somebody in a store where you've got unpredictable background noise, it follows no absolute pattern, then the adaptive mode is actually quite good. As long as you only go with a certain amount of noise reduction and realistically you can get away with maybe 8 dB or so of reduction before you start to hear, you know, slightly strange stuff going on. Let's do it. I might apply some extreme settings first, then back off a little bit, just to give you an idea of what happens when you go overboard with noise reduction. So here we go. I'm interested in innovation. I think it's really exciting. And also we are at a time in humanity, really, that at a point of a bigger, probably the biggest crisis we've ever had. As a, as, a, as a race. Now, that's reduced the noise quite a bit, but it doesn't sound good at all. Now, we've gone overboard with it. That's why I'm going to be less aggressive with the noise reduction in terms of the amount of it, and this threshold definitely needs to come down. I'm interested in innovation. I think it's really exciting. And also, we are at a time... Let's compare them. ...humanity, really, that at a point of a bigger... The, probably the biggest crisis we've ever... OK, that's pretty good, that. And I don't think it's having a negative effect on the actual audio. Once again, let's do the bypass unbypass trick. So bypass it, listen to it, then unbypass it and compare it. I'm interested in innovation. I think it's really exciting. And I'm interested in innovation. I think it's really exciting. And also, we are at a time in humanity, really, that at a point of a bigger, probably the biggest crisis we've ever had as a as a as a race. Might even back off on it slightly. That's okay, So, but you can see we still got that clipping problem. Now, I could have addressed the clipping prior to this. Yeah, okay, what I'll do is I'll reorder these plugins, and I'm going to put a limiter on just before that. So, you know, the choice of limiter is entirely down to you. The Waves L1 seems to do the job effectively, so I'll use that. And the only real problems are in this area here. Maybe I'll bring the threshold down to minus 3. With these kinds of limiter it automatically compensates the output gain. So as you'll see, if I just play a bit of this and I pull the threshold down, it will get louder and louder the more I pull it down. Exciting. And also we are at a time in... And that's a problem because it's going to just push everything up and that's not what I'm trying to accomplish in this case. Therefore, I'm going to pull down the threshold to a point where I think I need to apply the limiting above that. And I'm going to also apply a corresponding reduction in the output level so that the bits which aren't being affected, namely this section, will pass at the exact same level they started at. And the only gain reduction is going to happen in these bits, which are too high anyway. Let me play this. Now, you should see just on this meter here, this indicates the amount of gain reduction. Once it reaches here, you should see just a little bit of gain reduction going on. We're only really trying to stop that clipping at this point. Point of a bigger, the, probably the biggest crisis we've ever had as a, as, a, as a race with climate change. Yeah. And I don't believe the planet. So you play that again, just take a look at this. You'll see there's, what, 4 dB or something of reduction going on. As a race with climate change. And I don't believe the planet yeah, four or five dB. So that does that. That s solves that technical issue. Now we're not clipping going into the noise reduction, if that matters. 
The reason why I put the filter first is because we know that those low frequencies are not needed. We don't want them triggering any kind of compression. We just want to get them out at the earliest possible stage. So filtering definitely comes first. The order of the subsequent processes is sometimes subject to debate, but I'm going to go with limiter, noise reduction, then the compressor. Maybe then I might even add an EQ at the end of it all just to bring in some top end. And I'm going to compare it to the previous dialogue just to see if there's any kind of consistency between the two in terms of how they sound. Actually, before I put the compressor on, I'm just going to check the overall level of this. Now that we've done those processes, let's see where we're sitting on the loudness meter. And for this, I will have to play the whole thing. I'm interested in innovation. I think it's really exciting. And also we are at a time in humanity, really, that at a point of a bigger, probably the biggest crisis we've ever had as a, as, a, as a race with climate change. And I don't believe the planet, it's a problem with the planet. The planet will survive whatever we do to it. It's whether the human race survives, really, that's, that's critical. So we're a little bit low there, minus 24.1. One thing you can do, if you wish, as an alternative to putting the limiter on, is to actually reduce the clip gain on this. So I could have, you know, manually reduced this like that. But in this case, what I'm going to do is put the compressor on and then get it so that I'm happy with the sound of it and the amount of gain reduction we're getting on this. Then I'll compensate the output gain to hit the target level. So like I said previously, there's more than one way of achieving things. And you don't always have to follow any fixed rule for every single time you compress dialogue. Let's start with the 5 dB knee once more. I'll try a higher ratio on this. Let's start with 5 to 1 and see what we can do. I don't want to uh, heavily compress this bit. It, maybe it'll be reducing it slightly. I want the majority of the gain reductions to happen in this section here. Let's see what's going on with it. I'm interested in innovation. I think it's really exciting. And also we are at a time in... Okay, too much. You can see we've got a lot of gain reduction and you can hear it you can hear the background being pulled down as it hits the compressor i'll play that again i'm interested in innovation i think it's really exciting and also we are at a time in humanity really and if you can't hear that let me just exaggerate it by pulling the threshold down even more to the point where it's really excessive compression i'm interested in innovation i think it's really exciting and also we are at a time in humanity really that at a point of a bigger probably the biggest crisis we've ever had you can hear the attack and release going on you can hear the compression coming on and off as he speaks and that's not good so we're going to back off on that sometimes it's worth doing really heavy compression just so you know what the characteristics of it are and then you can back off and get a more realistic kind of setting especially when you're learning it let's start with you know a higher threshold see what's happening with that I'm interested in innovation. I think it's really exciting. Okay. And also we are Reasonable. At the time Some gain reduction, but not excessive. Really, that at a point of a bigger, probably the biggest crisis we've ever had as a as a. As and a then place here with climate change, and I don't believe the planet. It's a problem with the planet. The planet will survive whatever we do. Okay, I might go with a slightly quicker attack just because of this peak. You just say it fairly quickly. So, let's reduce this attack a little bit. Reduce it to two milliseconds. Play it from here. I like to give it a little bit of running before we actually hit the bit that we're interested in. Probably the biggest crisis we've ever had as a, as, a, as a race with climate change. And I don't believe the planet. It's a problem. Okay, we, maybe we could even get away with a slightly higher ratio here. Let's see if it affects it. As a, as, a, as a race with climate change. And I don't believe the planet. It's a problem with the planet. The planet will survive whatever we do to it. It's whether the human race survives, really. It's... Okay. The next thing I'm going to do, and I don't always do this. This is just mostly for the sake of you know showing you in the video. I'm going to play this through two more times, one without this compressor and one with, and we're going to take a look at both the long-term loudness, but also the range and see how the range is impacted by that compressor that we've now put on. So here it is minus the compressor. It's still got the limiter, but it doesn't have the final stage of compression. I'm interested in innovation. I think it's really exciting. And also we are at a time in humanity, really. That, uh, so that bit, as expected, the, fairly the consistent. 2LU, 3LU of range. As a, as a race with climate change. Then. And I don't believe the planet. It's a problem up. with the planet. The planet will survive whatever we do to it. It's whether the human race survives, really. That's, that's critical. So we're hitting like 8 or 9 LU of, of dynamic range within that section prior to the compressor. Now let's put it on, reset the loudness meter, and take a look at it. 
I'm interested in innovation. I think it's really exciting. And also we are at a time in humanity, really, that at a point of a bigger, probably the biggest crisis we've ever had as a, as a, as a race with climate change. And I don't believe the planet it's a problem with the planet. The planet will survive whatever we do to it. It's whether the human race survives, really, that's, that's critical. OK, so 4 or 5 LU. It's a lot more controlled. It still sounds pretty good, except the only thing is the long-term loudness is, is a little bit low now. So the way that I'm going to deal with this is on the output of the compressor. And the reason why I'm doing it this way is because if I turn the clip gain up now, clip gain is pre-insert, so that's going to have an effect on the amount of compression and limiting that's going on, and it'll change the characteristics of that processing. So I don't really want to change the sound of it, I just want to change the level, and the best way in this case to do it is after the processing or on the output of this compressor here. So we're at minus 27 LUFS, actually minus 26.7. So to get closer to the minus 23 target level, I'm going to turn this up Let's try 3.5 dB, see what's happening with that. I'm interested in innovation. I think it's really exciting. And also we are at a time in humanity, really, that at a point of a bigger, probably the biggest crisis we've ever had as a, as, a, as a race with climate change. And I don't believe the planet. It's a problem with the planet. The planet will survive whatever we do to it. It's whether the human race survives, really. That's, that's critical. That's pretty good, minus 23.2. You know, you have to bear in mind, of course, like I mentioned, Listening to solo dialogue is one thing, but when you add all the other mix elements in, it affects various things. Audibility of certain elements, but also absolute level, of course. And so it's highly likely that if you add in other things behind this, such as music, that level is going to go up a little bit. So sometimes it's worth just being a little bit cautious with it. You know, you might in practice set the dialogue to a little bit lower than that to allow for that extra level being introduced with those other mix elements. And since we're working to this minus 23 standard in this particular video, that's the UK broadcast EBU R128 spec, it's worth understanding the fact that the tolerance for that typically is minus 23 plus or minus 0.5 LU. So there's a little bit of leeway and you could go as low as minus 23.5 or as high as minus 22.5. But the closer you get it, the better really. So I like to get it certainly within 0.2. I personally like to try and get it to minus 23.0 if possible. Let's move on to the next piece. I'm going to try and do this quite quickly, I think. I can tell straight away it's quiet, so I might as well clip gain it up to get it somewhere closer right from the start. Maybe I won't play this whole thing, but let's just see what we're dealing with. We've just significantly expanded our office in Bangkok, um, doubling the, the folks we have there. We think it's critical to have folks in region to deliver our products and services and you know into that region. And, and we, Bangkok's a fantastic place to have, uh, you know, Whilst that's the, playing, the Asian. Uh, Let's take a look at this next year. So we're pretty excited about that. But you know, EV is exciting. Uh, it's exciting because when we look at it around the globe, I think you know, kind of bringing that back to you know North America, we're, that's a trend that convenience retailers really need to take a look at. Already, that one's quite good. Of the three we've heard so far, this one is the best start point, I would say. Let's just apply the filtering. Filtering always first. I could use the one band EQ because I'm not going to do anything else apart from apply that filter. Let's just filter it at 80 hertz. You know, 80 hertz is a frequency where it's going to filter out really low rumbles, but it's not going to notably make the voice sound thin. So for this, it's probably fine. Let's see how that sounds. And then just turn the clip gain up a little bit, I think, to get closer to this minus 23 level. So I'm going to do this early on. And the reason why I can do that, of course, is because there are no stray peak levels which go massively over or even hit zero db in this case we've just significantly expanded our office in bangkok um, doubling the the folks we have there we think it's critical to have folks in region to deliver our products and services and you know into that region and, and we bang, bangkok's a fantastic place to have uh, you know uh, the the asian uh, nax event next year so we're pretty excited about that but you know ev is exciting uh, i'm just going to compare this to some of the other dialogue actually it's full height of virality Crazy, crazy amounts of views on it. And also we are at a time in humanity, really. Bangkok's a fantastic place to have, uh, you mm. know, uh, the exciting. And also we are at a time in... OK, comparing them, you can hear that these are, are tonally different. I might just put another EQ on this, as, as I said before, I might, that I might do, and add in a little bit of maybe high mid or high frequency content to it. Exciting, and also we are at a time in humanity, really, that at a point of a bigger, 
the, probably the biggest crisis we've ever had as a, as, a, as a race with climate change. Virality. Crazy, crazy amounts of views on it. Back off on this a little. Virality. And I don't believe the planet. It's a problem our products and services and you know into that region and, and we Bang, Bangkok's a fantastic place to have this needs some EQ so let's do that I know I said I was going to use the one band but I can change it to the seven band actually in this case let's just reapply that 80 hertz filter like that and maybe there's some cutting that we can do in the Mid band with this somewhere. Uh, Nax event next year, so we're pretty excited about that. But you know, EV is exciting. Uh, it's exciting because when we look at it around the globe, I think you know, kind of bringing that back to that? you know North America, we're, that's a trend that convenience retailers really need to take a look at. So certainly the trends are slower in the U.S. than they are in other you know in other parts of the globe. Compare it to this time in humanity, really. That, uh, Bang, Bangkok's a fantastic place to have. Maybe a high frequency cut on yeah, this. The Asian. Uh, NAX event next year, so we're pretty excited about that. But you know, EV is exciting. Uh, it's exciting because when we look at it around the globe, I think you know, kind of bringing that back. Okay, so th the sound a little bit closer. Of course, there are EQ match plugins that you can use. Of course, you know, there's one that Isotope do, but there's another thing that we can do. Once we've got all these pieces of dialogue somewhere closer to where we want them to be, I'm going to route them all through a dialogue bus, and then I'm going to apply some multiband compression, and that frequency conscious compression should smooth out some of the differences between these three sections of dialogue because you know ones which are more prominent in certain frequency bands it will cause the compressors to trigger more in those bands than the others and we should get an outcome that sounds more consistent between the three so let's open this up again and just apply the compression to this for the sake of it here let's use a different compressor one which I really like, if I'm in a real rush and I just need a result and I don't have time, the Renaissance compressor from Waves, which looks a bit outdated now, to be honest, but it sounds great. And usually I just keep the attack and release on their default, keep everything on default and only change the ratio and the threshold. So this dialogue is fairly consistent already. Let's start it on like 2.5 to 1 and then just pull the threshold down until we get an amount of gain reduction, which sounds right. And that we're happy we just with. significantly expanded our office in Bangkok, um, doubling the, the folks we have there. We think it's critical to have folks in region. If we go too heavy with it, our products and services, and you know, you can hear that's way and too much. A fantastic place to have, uh, you know, uh, the the Asian uh, NAX event next year. So we're pretty excited about that. But you know, EV is exciting. Uh, it's exciting because when we look at it around the globe, I think. You know, people use this term transparent with compression. This one is quite transparent, actually. You know, you can get away with a good amount of gain reduction with this and it doesn't have really any negative impact on the sound until you go very overboard with it. So I do quite like this compressor for dialogue. I'm happy with that broadly. We're reducing the gain. We're not trying to slam it into the compressor because it's quite consistent. This is just about control with this one. The real compression is going to come in on that final piece which is all over the place. Let's just make sure that the overall output level is somewhere close to our minus 23 target level and i'm just going to start by turning this up a little bit because i know that it's already going to be low so here we, we go. just significantly expanded our office in bangkok um doubling the the folks we have there we think it's critical to have folks. in fact i need to reset this and then we've just it. significantly expanded our office in bangkok um doubling the the folks we have there we think it's critical to have folks in region to deliver our products and services and you know into that region and, and we bang, bangkok's a fantastic place to have uh, you know it could go just a little bit higher. Take it up to there, play that once more, reset We've it. We've just significantly expanded our office in Bangkok, um, doubling the, the folks we have there. We think it's critical to have folks in region to deliver. And purely for loudness, let's just compare it to the others. We're not worried about EQ as much at this point because we're going to put that multiband on it. I think it took two days to get up to its full height of virality. Crazy, crazy amounts of views on it. On really one. exciting. And also we are at a time in humanity really we're gonna to have to figure out how do we keep consumers on the you know in the stores longer because they're going to be landing and i am just going to filter out a little bit more of the low end on this i think just take it up to there actually i could increase the steepness of the curve here the q sometimes it's referred to the curve order you know it goes up in six db increments generally a first order curve is six decibels proactive second order 12 decibels proactive third order curve would be 18 db proactive 
So let's just we're try gonna have that. to figure out how do we keep consumers on the you know in the stores longer because they're going to be landing in you know convenience retail locations to. And then actually, having now increased the steepness of the curve, maybe I'll drop the frequency to we're somewhere have to on there. We're going to figure out how do we keep consumers on the you know in the stores longer because they're. Compare it to Honestly, this. Honestly, really, at the point of a bigger. The, probably... Okay, pretty happy with that. You know, there's no, like I said, there's no hard and fast rules about how you do this. I'm just trying to show how I might go about it in this case. Final piece of audio then. I didn't have anything sufficiently dynamic, so I've recorded this myself just as a mock-up. Here it is. This is an example of a dialogue recording. On occasions, people might talk really loudly or they might talk really quietly. Dialogue levels can vary quite considerably. Okay, so let's just drop the high pass filter on it and if you want to copy one from another track that one for example you can just drag it what's holding down the alt key and it's made a, a duplicate and let's just check that that doesn't make it sound too thin this is an example of a dialogue recording on occasions people might talk really loudly so the compressor is next this is where we're going to use a slightly heavier ratio i'm going to go back to the pro compressor for this so the goal with this I'm going to have quite a hard knee on it because I want it to be compressing, you know, as soon as it hits this, really. I don't want it to ease into the compression too much. Uh, the attack is probably all right. The release might be all right, but we'll address those as necessary. The ratio, let's go. This is quite excessive, 10 to 1. But we'll try it, see what happens. I'll just start with the threshold that is default and then adjust it accordingly. So I want pretty much no compression to happen here. Then I want it to kick in where this happens because that's the bit I really need to reduce in level. This is an example of a dialogue recording. On occasions, people might talk really loudly or they might talk really quietly. Dialogue levels can vary quite considerably. Mm, okay, I think on this part, dialogue levels can vary. I could hear the compressor starting to act, so I will just have a, a slightly softer knee. And what I'm trying to avoid here is the compressor becoming apparent. You know, on occasions I'll watch stuff on TV and I can hear the compression going on. And uh, the more you know about audio, the less you can really fully ever turn off your analysis of everything you listen to. You've probably had this, you know, if you're into music production, you can never listen to a track without analysing how the snare drum's been EQ'd. If you're into post-production, you're thinking that's ADR, I can hear the compression on that, I can tell they've done noise reduction, I can tell they've smoothed over that edit in one way or another. So that's the downside of it. But the good thing is, because you can hear those things, you know, you can deal with them in your job. I'm fairly happy with what we've got going on here. I'll play it through one more time. It was only compressing very slightly on these bits, but it was acting as we wanted it to here. Perhaps 10 to 1 was actually heavier than necessary. I'll reduce it just a little bit uh, to 8 to 1 and take a listen to that. You know, the most important thing about compression is firstly, of course, that it sounds right. Secondly, that it controls the dynamics in a way which is suitable for the delivery medium of the program you're working on. And thirdly, try not to be influenced too much by the interface of the plugin. You know, it looks very nice and you can see the gain reduction and, you know, some people might say, oh, I've got so much gain reduction going on, I can see it happening here. I'm happy with that. But, you know, is it doing what you need it to? So on occasions, you know, hide the plugin or look away from the screen or close your eyes, listen to it and make sure that you're happy with the sound of it. Let's play it once again. This is an example of a dialogue recording. On occasions, people might talk really loudly or they might talk really quietly. Dialogue levels can vary quite considerably. I think that's actually still slightly too much compression. So I will reduce the ratio a little bit more, but I do still want it to be fairly high because of the nature of it. Just going to increase the threshold very slightly because I can actually hear it coming in here, ironically, more than, more than there. So maybe that's the threshold being just lower than necessary. Let's try it once more. This is an example of a dialogue recording. On occasions, people might talk really loudly or they might talk really quietly. Dialogue levels can vary quite considerably. That's better. Okay, I think I'm fairly happy with that. I'd be interested to see what's going on on the loudness meter with this. So, sorry to play this again, but we are going to just listen to it and see what happens with the long-term loudness. And I think it might be low. Let's guess that it is low and just turn up the output of the compressor right from the start by I don't know, 3dB or so. This is an example of a dialogue recording. On occasions, people might talk really loudly or they might talk really quietly. Okay, so we are going to have to turn it up. Let's try to turn it up to about six. Reset this, play it again. 
This is an example of a dialogue recording. On occasions, people might talk really loudly or they might talk really quietly. Dialogue levels can vary quite considerably. Mm, okay, it's, it's in the ballpark. I'll just turn it down a little bit. Remember, the long-term loudness is averaged over the whole thing, so it, it will go up, it will go down, depending on how much content you've played through it. Finally, now that that's about right, I'm just going to bypass the compressor. Let's hear it prior to applying that compression, and then we'll hear it with, and then that's it, done. This is an example of a dialogue recording. On occasions, people might talk really loudly, or they might talk really quietly. Dialogue levels can vary quite considerably. And with the compression. This is an example of a dialogue recording. On occasions, people might talk really loudly, or they might talk really quietly. Dialogue levels can vary quite considerably. You can hear that it's, it's effectively, because it's reduced this, and we've then compensated the makeup gain or the output gain, this now sounds louder. So we've added that degree of consistency, which is the goal, of course. And, you know, TV content is only going to be moderately dynamic. If you're mixing a film, it might be a bit more dynamic. So you can get away with kind of keeping some more of the dynamic range for film content just because it's played in large cinemas and so on. But for TV, bear in mind, most people will be listening through really terrible speakers built into the TV itself. There will be a proportion of people with sound bars and then there'll be people with large sound systems, but a majority do listen through really poor speakers. So don't go crazy, crazy with the dynamic range on dialogue for TV. Rein it in with compression. Before we apply that multiband I spoke about, I'm just going to try an alternative to this, which is using clip effects. So I'm just going to duplicate this. Let's take these off, or at least make them inactive. I should mention the fact that you can only actually edit clip effects with Pro Tools Ultimate. You access them with Alt and 6 at the top of the keyboard. And you can see it appears here. This essentially is just the functionality of the Avid Channel Strip plugin in a different format. It acts on the clip in real time and you can change it at any time so you don't have to commit to any rendering. It's not like Audio Suite. If anything, it's closer to a real-time plugin, except the difference is this happens on a clip-by-clip -clip basis and you can have different settings on one clip than you do on the next one. So it's a very good alternative to just automating a, a real-time plugin. Let's see if we can replicate the settings we did earlier with this. We're starting out with the EQ. Now the filters here, switch on the filter, increase the frequency, whilst playing it of course. This is an example of a dialogue recording. Yes, yeah, really excessive. Or they might talk really quietly. Dialogue levels can vary quite considerably. Let's take that this down to about 100 and something hertz. Recording. Okay, and this is a real, a real good test of whether or not you can actually hear the compression because in this particular interface, there's no indication of the gain reduction. And I'm just going to move this track up a little bit so that it's closer to the top of the screen so we can zoom in a bit on, on what we're seeing here. Let's set the compressor ratio to, I think we had about seven to one before. Let's go something like that around there. Play this. This is an example of a dialogue recording. On occasions, people might talk really loud. Let's compare it without the compressor. You can turn off sections of this just by clicking on this little power indicator in any given section of it. So here it is minus that compression. On occasions, people might talk really loudly and with it. On occasions, people might talk really loudly. Okay, so that's working. And if you are ever in any doubt as to whether or not it's compressing, just pull the threshold down to an extreme so it's really obvious and then just back off from there. This is an example of a dialogue recording. On occasions, people might talk really loudly. That's really obvious. Or they might talk really quietly. Dialogue levels can vary quite considerably. Let's back off on that quite a lot to get it about right. You, you notice when I deselect the clip, it grays out. It's only when you've got it selected that it becomes active. This is an example of a dialogue recording. On occasions, people might talk really loudly, or they might talk really quietly. Dial okay, and of all the processing we've done so far, we've seen no effect on the waveform because that's only affected normally by Audio Suite plugins, but you can render clip effects into it. Before I do that, let me make a duplicate of this. I'm gonna render the effect of this particular setting. So if you right click it, there's a clip effects section, render, you will see a new waveform is generated, which will be just slightly different because we've only gone moderate with the compression, like that. And now let's do one that's really excessive by basically pulling the threshold down a bit more. Maybe turn up the output gain, that's what I didn't do on the other one. Turn it up, right click, clip effects, render. You can see that's a lot more consistent. 
So if I compare that to the one that we had, the original there, with no processing on it, and this one, which is rendered with clip effects compression, albeit slightly heavy, you can see that there is considerably less variance in the overall level. I'd be interested just to see what this sounds like, actually. Before I play it, I'll just mention the fact that, of course, when you render it, it then resets the clip effects to flat because you don't want them being imposed twice. You know, the effects of that are now baked into the audio, uh, and then you can do subsequent processing, should you wish, uh, afresh from here. Let's just see what this sounds like. This is an example of a dialogue recording. On occasions, people might talk really loudly, or they might talk really quietly. Dialogue levels can vary quite considerably. It doesn't sound that bad, to be honest. It is heavy, but it does control the level. And, you know, there might be times when you need to do that. Just be careful that it doesn't go so far that you can hear that kind of pumping effect of excessive compression. Okay, we're almost there now with this video. Let me reorder these into the original order. And I'm just gonna root all of these through this aux and apply that multiband compression that I mentioned. So select them all, hold down option and shift, root them to a new track. It could be a mono one in this case. I'll just call it DX for dialogue. Let's go with that. Okay, solo safe. Okay, so the point of multiband compression is that it's split into different frequency bands with their own thresholds. You can set them differently. So if you want to rein in a certain frequency band more than the other, as in apply more or heavier compression in that band because it's you know a bit too much in that frequency range, then you can do that. And the one that I quite like is the SA2 dialogue processor from Mac DSP. This is split into several bands. This emulates the behavior of, uh, I think it was a one-off hardware box which somebody built and they went in and modeled it. And you don't actually get to find out what the frequencies are, but you know you don't probably don't really need to know exactly what the frequencies are. And as you pull each of these down, it will compress in that particular frequency band. So for example, in this first one, which we know had some excessive uh, mid frequencies, maybe they're still slightly more prominent than would be ideal. I could try pulling down maybe this high mid one until we see some gain reduction. My Instagram, because I thought it was a cool clip. We wake up the next morning, it's had 70,000 views on Instagram and already started getting some traction on blogs and things like this. But you probably want to have some degree of gain reduction in all of them. You've got to pull these down quite a bit. These thresholds in this plugin are a little bit odd. So if I pull these down to minus 36, all of them, let's see what's going on. And you should see, more gain reduction in the bands which have more energy in the original audio. We'll take a look. I posted it on my Instagram because I thought it was a cool clip. We wake up the next morning, it's had 70,000 views on Instagram and already started getting some track. I'm going to back off. I don't really want to pull that bottom end down so much. I'm going to back off on that. The higher it is, the less it's going to reduce it. Maybe have this one a bit less and pull this one down a bit more where we have the harshness in the mids. I posted it on my Instagram because I thought it was a cool clip. We wake up the next morning, it's had 70,000 views on Instagram and already- Let's compare it to this one now. I think it's really exciting. And also we are at a time in humanity really, that at a point of- That's a bit more consistent than it was. Remember, if one particular clip has more frequencies in a certain band than another one, then this will just, it'll trigger the compressor. So it's gonna smooth out those differences a bit more compared to this one. Significantly expanded our office in Bangkok, um, doubling the, the folks we have there. We think it's critical to have folks in... Re he just sound like he needs some more EQ, actually. Let me open this. Significantly expanded. Yeah, he sounds quite close to the mic compared to some of these other people. In humanity, really, that at, at a point of a... We've just significantly expanded our office in Bangkok. I think I've made, I think I've made it too thin, actually. We've just significantly expanded our office in Bangkok, um, doubling the, the folks we have there. We think it's critical to have folks in region to deliver our products and services and, you know, into that region. And, and we, Bangkok's a fantastic place to have, uh, you know, uh, the, the Asian uh, NACS event next year. So we're we compare that again. Next morning, it's had 70,000 views on Instagram and already started getting some traction on blogs and things like this. And also we are at a time in humanity, really, that, uh, convenience retailers really need to take I think I need a little bit of uh, DSing on this sometimes it's only by comparing it to other things that you really get a sense of what's going on with it and I'm going to use the Mac DSP one and I'm just going to start with a preset so we'll go to vocal there's nothing here which is really intended for dialogue but maybe the male singing s remover one could be a good start point at least We've just significantly expanded our office in Bangkok, um, doubling the, the folks we have there. We think. Just going to 
compare that. We've just significantly expanded our office. We've just significantly expanded our office in Bangkok, um, doubling the... It might be too much that, maybe, but I have to hear it in context with the other dialogue, I think. And also we are at a time in humanity, really, that at a point of a bigger, probably the biggest crisis we've ever had as a, as a, as a race with climate change. Bangkok's a fantastic place to have, uh, you know, uh, the, the Asian uh, NACS event next year. Yeah, so we're pretty excited uh, about that. Let's reduce but, the range. You know, so the range dictates the amount of reduction that you're going to have as, as a maximum. Bang, Bangkok's a fantastic place to have, uh, you know. It's had 70,000 views on Instagram and already started. Compared to this. This is an example of a dialogue recording. On occasions, people might talk really loudly. EV is exciting. Uh, it's exciting because when we look at it around the globe, I think, you know, kind of bringing that back to, you know, North America, we're, that's a trend that... It's full height of virality. Correct. Okay, we could go on all day with this, but the point of it is, you know, you have to compare pieces of audio to other pieces of audio to get a real sense of whether it sounds good or not. You could even use a reference piece. So if you've got something which you know sounds good, bring that into the project and compare it. And the whole process is about trying to reduce the differences between different pieces of audio. Now, these are all from completely different projects recorded in different parts of the world on different microphones uh, under different circumstances in different environments. So, of course, there's not going to be any consistency. But there we've managed to improve the result. I would be tempted to work on this a little bit more and try and get it even more consistent, actually. In practice, if you were working on, you know, a drama or a feature film, you, you would probably, if there was such wild variants, have to resort to ADR. Documentaries are perhaps one of the most challenging things just because of the nature of how stuff is recorded. I'm fairly happy with the result there. As I mentioned earlier, you know, this video is just intended to try and give you an insight into some of the processes you can employ when EQing and compressing dialogue. And of course, you know, you could take the other option, which is using EQ match plugins, which can be effective. But when you're comparing one voice to another, and it doesn't always give you the result you want. I used five plugins on that track. That's kind of a maximum for me. I rarely use more than that. You know, if you really had to, you could show inserts F to J and start adding more to it. But if you start using more than five plugins, you know, maybe you've reached the point where you're not actually improving it anymore. Anyway, hopefully that's given you at least a few ideas. I'd be really interested to hear about how you go about doing this, how you go about EQing and compressing and processing dialogue. Feel free to comment, actually. Let me know what you think I could do better. Let me know how you do it. And if you're able to, you know, make a response video. One of the great things about this platform is that we can do that, you know, we can discuss ideas and share workflows and hopefully get to a better result in everything we do. Well, we'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. If you did like it, give it a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe because there will be more videos to come soon. So I'll see you again next time.